You might be familiar with this sentence. We're so tired of this. You might have heard it in many different contexts. Tired of the bad traffic, tired of the bad weather, tired of the government not doing anything about climate change. You might have even heard it from people who seem to be living their best lives. We all complain, be it about bad traffic, bad weather, or bad government policies. Despite how privileged or unprivileged a person might be, this sentence has probably been spoken by many. And I too am tired of this. I am tired of the constant negativity that surrounds us. My name is Shriya and I'm a 17 year old high school student. My routine in Oslo is quite similar to most high school students. I wake up in the morning, manage to drag myself out of bed and make it to school. After school, I spend time finishing up my homework, and when I don't have homework, I spend time with my friends. But the part I dread most about each day is having to wake up, and not for the reason you might think. You see, my father likes watching the news every morning, so the first thing I hear and see each morning is the news. But I find the news to be so depressing. It's usually about some war somewhere, some financial crisis, a bombing or a robbery. The point is, each morning I wake up to something negative, and honestly, I'm tired of that. Then I realized that this negativity isn't just limited to the news. Dinner table discussion often revolved around what is wrong with the world. My politically engaged friends are usually talking about the government and its flaws. And of course, social media might be refreshing with the memes for a second until there's a post about the extinction of an animal species. Try mentioning something positive about a world during a dinner table discussion. Chances are you'll be called out for being too optimistic or someone will reply with something equally negative in return. Because most of what we consume about the world today is about what is wrong with it, it is almost as if being realistic is being negative. Then I resorted to the internet to find out more about this. Turns out other people have noticed this negativity and scientists have researched it. Today, a phenomenon called negativity bias evidently exists in the world. The essence of the phenomenon is this. Even when of equal intensity, negative things have a greater impact on our psychology than positive or neutral things. So basically, we tend to focus on the negative thing more than the positive thing. But then the question rises, why are we wired like this? Why do we tend to focus on the negative more than the positive? In a sense, our forefathers are to be blamed for this. Turns out this pessimistic instinct uh, is an evolutionary hand-me-down. Psychologist Timothy J. Bono explains that for our ancestors, the bad stuff could be a matter of life and death. And that is why we're wired this way. For our forefathers, this bias was useful because it helped them identify between things that were life-threatening, but maybe it isn't as useful in today's day and age. This phenomenon is exactly what the media exploits. As supported by the bias, humans tend to focus on negative things more than positive things. This in turn affects our psyche. If you think about it, it really is a vicious cycle. The media has realized that we as humans thrive off this negativity, and that's why bad news dominates the headlines and good things really make the front page. That effectively feeds into our fear of the world's alarming condition, which further enhances this bias. But bad news isn't going to stop. Bad things are still going to happen in the world, the media is still going to cover it, we're still going to view it, and it's still going to affect us, consciously or subconsciously. But like I said before, I was tired with this negativity. There had to be some way that I could be a well-informed person while also blocking out the negativity. So firstly, I think it's important to actually realize how much news you consume. This is essentially technique number one. Uh, there's some signs to this as well. A study by researchers Sean Aker and Michelle Guilin concluded that individuals who watch just three minutes of negative news in the morning had a 27% greater likelihood of reporting their day as unhappy six to eight hours later. So if you're the type of person who checks the news first thing in the morning, you're especially prone to the consequences. 
You might argue, well, it makes me a well-informed person. It turns out heavy news consumers are more likely to be irrational than well-informed. This uh, is a cognitive bias called availability heuristic. The bias states that people estimate the frequency or the probability of an event by the ease of which instances come to mind. So because we're exposed to all this bad news all the time, we tend to think that the world is full of bad news only. So thanks to this bias, we rate tornadoes, which kill about 50 people a year, as a more common cause of death than asthma, which kills about 4,000 people a year. Another thing we need to understand is that positive and neg negative things unfold at different timelines. The news tends to report things that have taken place since the last edition or the last event of that kind. Think about it. Before the internet, you would hear about things that happened a day before or maybe two days before. But now, it can even be a matter of seconds. Let's imagine a contrasting situation. Let us imagine that newspapers came out every 50 years. Peace researcher John Galton points out that the headlines may not be about political scandals. Instead, they would report about significant global changes, such as an increase in life expectancy. The point is, bad things happen quickly, but good things don't. They're not built in a day. Moreover, for us humans, sudden disaster is more compelling than slow improvements. Maybe you've noticed this. Maybe you did not follow a piece of news that unfolded gradually, but a, a, a headline about an unexpected bomb attack that probably grabbed your attention. The reason why it's so important to be aware of our and media's negativity bias is because of the impact it has on our psychology. It became important for me to be aware of this because I didn't want every morning of mine to start off on such a gloomy note. I wanted to fake, wake up feeling good and optimistic about my day ahead. In no way do I mean to overlook or disregard the negative aspects of the world. Yes, bad things definitely do happen. But so do good things. I just believe that they don't get enough coverage as the bad things do. I just believe it is essential to realize that being realistic doesn't necessarily mean being negative. Moreover, constantly consuming things that are wrong with the world may end up with you feeling defeated. I know this because it happened to me sometimes. I thought trying to make difference trying to make a change wouldn't really make any difference. You might think, why should I vote? It's not going to help. Or I could donate some money, but there's just going to be another kid who's starving next week. There is, of course, the argument that the media reports the bad news since it's the important one. It can contribute to positive change. For example, reporting about natural disasters may prompt action on environmental issues. Or writing about inefficient government policy may point out the flaws in the system. While this may be true, the fact of the matter is that not every news organization bases their decisions on altruism. So we need to realize the length to which it affects us personally. We're exposed to all the news all the time, and our view of the world is obviously affected by this. This can go two ways. It can either motivate us to help change the world for the better, but the opposite can happen as well. Too much bad news can leave us feeling unconcerned and hopeless. I realized that because often I started to feel as though nothing can be done. I'm 17 years old and that is a dangerous thing to feel at this age. If I felt, if I felt that before, maybe people my age have as well. Maybe you're a prey to this feeling. Sometimes I felt as if my effort isn't really going to make a difference, that it isn't really going to matter. But like I said before, feeling unbothered to make change is dangerous. There's a lot of things that need to be changed about the world to make it a better place. But for that to happen, we need to believe that we have the power to create that change, believe we can create that change, believe that our effort is going to make a difference because there's still so much left to do. Thank you.